Today on the show we have a brilliant singer-songwriter, guitar player, multi-instrumentalist, and renowned producer, and my dear friend, Mr. Fernando Perdomo. Thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. This show is awesome. I love this concept. Thanks, man. So, um, we've known each other for a little while. What inspired you to get into music? What made you pick up the guitar? So many things. I mean, uh, it was... Way before I got obsessed with girls, it was the most attractive thing in the world. Um, and it was that moment where I, I realized that that's what I want to do. And uh, I, I have to blame MTV. I was raised in a house that had cable. And uh, MTV really showed me that, wow, that's what I want to do. And my mom uh, was a classically trained pianist, and uh, she loved music, and I always had music around the house. But it was when I saw all these guys having incredible fun on TV, and guys and girls just killing it, and it's going, man, I want to do that. It was really, really attractive to me. And then there was that feeling when I started performing and playing guitar, and it was a high, you know? It, it, it's uh, something that I... I feel like my life wouldn't be complete if it was part of it, if it wasn't part of it. It was the heat of the moment. Very much the heat of the moment. Yes, there's a video of me dancing when I was uh, months old, uh, a year and a half maybe old, to Heat of the Moment by Asia. <laughs> Was that the uh, video on MTV? Uh, that was the video on MTV, and I'm just dancing to it, having a great time, and I think that's the moment where I wanted to be a performer. So, but why the guitar? Why did you pick up the guitar? Why well, not the that's piano? That's actually a good question. I mean, my mom wanted me to play piano, and she gave me, uh, she hooked me up with some piano lessons when I was really young, and it just didn't seem as attractive to me as the guitar. And I really love the bass still. I mean, you know, the guitar and the bass are my two main, main instruments, and. I do I, re I regret not taking the piano lessons in the end because um, I wish I had more technique on piano, but I actually do a lot of writing on piano. Um, I guess it's the limited knowledge on piano that makes me uh, keep it simple on the piano as opposed to on guitar where sometimes my the fact that I'm trained on guitar can get in the way of a good song. Right. Yeah, it's interesting how taking yourself away from your own instrument can help you not get in your own way when writing. It kind of gets you that place where you first started, that heat of the moment thing. And uh, I see that your son had a, his first show yesterday. <laughs> at the he, he sang the national anthem at the Marlins game, right? He was one of, uh, of like uh, 35 kids, but uh, it sounded wonderful. It was incredible. And uh, that must have been To have your first see. stadium show at six. <laughs> That's pretty insane. Do you remember your first show? I do. Where was uh, it? My first actual show. Well, I had played... Hmm. I went to... I was, I've been very lucky with schools. Uh, every school I went to had a great music program. I started off at the North Beach Elementary Music Program uh, uh, and our teacher, Ms. Medic, put us in a... did a, did a couple of, like, we did the guitar, guitar shows here and there, like, you know, you know... We did a little bit of that. So Van Halen. The, the big one was... Uh, Wolfgang Van Halen. Okay. And the big one was, there was a show called American Pride or something, um, uh, and uh, they uh, needed someone to lip sync Only You by the Platters. And I nailed it. I like, got the mic and I like supposed to be singing to a girl and I got down on my knees and I got the part. So that was my first performance. However, my first time playing alone was at Nautilus Middle School. We had a talent show. And I did Sugar Mountain by Neil Young, and I won the talent show. Wow. But that was before my voice cracked. So I sounded just like Neil. I had a harmonica holder, acoustic guitar, and it was really, really cool. That's and it was a good feeling. That, that, that applause sent me on this whole journey. So were you writing back then? Yes. And what, do you remember uh, what 
motivated you to want to write? And uh... Well, um, I guess you can blame it all on the Beatles and uh, noticing that they wrote their own songs. And I'm like, gee, I should write my own songs. And do you remember what your first song was? Oh, yeah. Can you uh, play a little bit of it? Sure. It was horrible. Um, so it's okay, that's what you want to hear. But, uh, but it did have some Beatle-like sensibility in the chorus. Basically, I, um, I was 13, 12 maybe? And it was basically a uh, period piece on my financial status at the time. Okay. And the song was called I've Got No Money. And it went like this. And I remember that performance that I did Sugar Mountain I auditioned for the performance by doing Sugar Mountain in this one, and they said, oh, you shouldn't do this one. Huh. So, everyone's a critic, and I was like, shot down on my first song. It was like... I got no money. I got no money. I don't know why. I don't know why. I got no money, I got no money, I wish it was a lie, I wish it was a lie, I wish it was a lie, oh, 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 yeah. Cool, that's a nice one. That was hey. I think the next one has got no woman. No <laughs> nice. How old were you when you wrote that one? 12, 13 ish. Nice. I don't know. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, you know, it's my, my style has completely changed. I think that's the bluesiest thing I ever wrote. It you sounds know. a little bit like a song of yours that I like a lot. Steal this song. Steal this song, sing along. I don't care if my money's gone. Music is for you and me, so sing. Tom Dowd used to say, there's, you know, these guys are trying to prove they're guitar players. You've never been that way and still come across as a great guitar player. A, a guy recently um, saw a me play writer. with my band right. for the first time, and he's like, you know, I've only seen you play once, and it was acoustic, and I had no idea that you could play guitar like that. Because when I play acoustic, I'm a straight songwriter. I, I, I don't break into solo, I don't pull out a looper pedal and play solos. I play songs, when it goes to the guitar solo section, I sing the solo, and you know, I, I try to separate that because I know a lot of guitar player songwriters that they want to show off their chops and sometimes it loses the focus of the song. You know, that's what I love about a lot of your songs, it's like, they won't have solos because they don't call for it because you don't want the attention to be taken away from the amazing lyrics and the vibe, you know, the feel. Well, what we, my brother and I, when we were trying to write songs, we were also Beatles freaks, and we loved how they would have melodic lines as the solos, not necessarily, uh, you know, guitar player just playing whatever he wants. So that when it, I mean, we played with lots of other guitar players over the years, and when you played with us, you were like, you know, no problem. You would play whatever the melody was. How do you normally write? Um, there's no rules in rock and roll. But um, I'm not a very lyrics-driven person. I am a very title-driven person. So I've had a situation where I've had a title, and I've worked out the chords, and I've come up with the chorus. But I've had times where I'm literally in front of the microphone, singing the vocal and writing the lyrics as I go. And there's other times where the lyrics come first. There's times where I have a, a, a piece of music for 10 years, and the lyrics take 10 years. And then there's a song like Smile, which happened in 10 minutes, the whole thing. I was so overcome with emotion that I just started playing it, and I wrote the whole song in 10 minutes. Home took 10 years. Mm -hmm. Started off as a piece of music that, that uh, evolved over the years, and I think I had to grow up to be able to write the lyrics. Mm -hmm. If I would have written the lyrics for that 10 years ago, it would have been nothing like the way it is now. I had to grow up to write that song. Mm -hmm. You know. Let's hear a little bit of that one. Hell no, I won't go. Please don't you take my home. I 
far Oh, alone So please don't you take my home Home can be broken or safe And even if I lose my home It will be standing tall Cause every time I close my eyes Home will be there in my mind Home, home How'd you write California Moon? That's a great one. The sky was very clear. It's not as cloudy as it is in Miami. And I looked up in the sky and it was like the planetarium. It was beautiful. And there was a big, plump moon. And I was like, wow. And, and the chorus came into my head. California Moon is shining. Instead of dancing in the dark, let's go out to Yes, I produced an artist named Linda Fairhex who is a incredible, incredible songwriter who put out an album in 1970 that uh, didn't sell much during its, its initial run but ended up becoming a big cult classic, um, especially with the uh, beards and hats and sundresses generation. All at once, of course. Um, my usual look. It's Miami. I have to dress a little <laughs> snuggler. But, um, we were on tour. Uh, Jim opened up for her uh, second tour ever, which was uh, the uh, West Coast tour. And uh, I was in the band, and uh, we were staying at a house in Portland. And Katie. Um, yeah, Katie Phil, who was amazing. And we had nothing better to do than to. Well, we found, found. Didn't we find something? We found a, a record. At a, we went to. We had a day off, and we went to um, an estate sale. Yeah, and it was in Seattle. Actually. Yes. Yeah. And we found that. Real to real, real to real, and it had all these song titles on it, and we thought it was someone's lost record, and we decided to take the song titles and create a game out of it. Right, songwriting game, similar to the show where we have to write the song in thirty minutes, so we split off wow. groups. And we we um we wrote a record on on the day off. I am a Scottish folk artist <laughs> named, named Time Connor. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Dolores Morris rode her horse to the next town to find her king. <laughs> Time corner! Are there any subjects in writing that are off limits to you? I like for songs to be vague to the point where they could be reinterpreted in different ways by different mm -hmm. people. So, you know, keeping them simple is one way of doing that, you know? Because if I, if, if I took Smile, for example, and like wrote more lyrics to it, then less people would be... I think people would, wouldn't feel as... Um, I, I think they wouldn't identify with it as much. Well, on this show, we like to write a song in 30 minutes. Are you up for doing that? Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to write a song. We'll see you in 30 minutes. Well, we finished the song, and we still have time left. How about that? We still have enough sugar in there to make a 
Coke. Yeah, there we go. So what's the name of the song? It's called. This song's called Bad Tattoo. Bad Tattoo. One, two, one, two, three, D. Yeah, good, good. It's a good song. So, it's like uh, a bad tattoo. It's like a bad tattoo. So, one more question. Um, where do you see yourself when you're old and gray, sitting in your rocking so chair? Yeah, gray now. Well, okay, when you're old and gray, mm -hmm. not young and gray, you're doing like the Steve Martin look now, with the gray coming in, mm -hmm. but still very young. Where do you see yourself when you're uh, old and gray and looking back on uh, what you've done and, and mm -hmm. uh, your body at work? Well, definitely going to be accomplished. If I, even if I stop now, I'll be like, wow, I did a lot. But that's pretty much my MO, you know? I want to do as much as I can and help as many people as possible and influence as many people as possible. And um, when I'm old and gray, hopefully I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'll feel content with my body of work. I don't feel, I won't feel like, damn, I should have done this, I should have done that. I should be like, damn, it's pretty cool that I did that, pretty cool that I did that, you know? Um, my goal isn't so much fame, it's more accomplishment, it's more um, leaving a mark. Awesome. Sunset. Yeah, amen. Leaving a permanent mark and uh, helping out people, you know. Um, whether it's helping out my friends to make their music or helping out people get through stuff. When it comes down, that's the real meaning of success, is affecting people in a positive way. So I want to look back and be like, wow, hey, I did a lot, I affected people in a positive way, I had some fun. And now, time to die. Oh well. Amen. I want to be comfortable with dying. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Jim. This is awesome. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Adventures in